How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Bengals draft 2021 now complete. As we know, Jamar Chase, the man, is an absolute stud. Bengals selected him in the first round. He's got the athleticism. He's got the ability to create space. He makes big plays. He provides the team with that viable deep threat. He checks off a lot of boxes to make this Bengals offense a lot more dynamic. Oh, and as if we didn't already know, he's the ex-teammate of the then-led Joe Burrow national champion, LSU Tigers. So this guy's in a unique situation, to say the very least, because he's going to come into a system that's being built around Joe Burrow, a guy he already has really good chemistry with. This guy has the ability to be an instant top five receiver in this league, and I think he has to be. Because the one glaring worry of this pick is the obvious fact that the Bengals' top need in this draft was offensive line, and the second top need was defensive line, and they chose to go with the guy that was going to make this team more of an aerial threat, and a league that has become more and more about the pass in general in Jamar Chase. Then the Bengals selected Jackson Carmen out of Clemson, the local boy out of Fairfield, Ohio. We mentioned it before. It really feels like the organization is taking a different approach here and trying to bring in talent they feel like would want to be here, want to be in Cincinnati, guys they could retain for years. And Carmen's just another example of that. And he's a guy with immense talent as well. A man that did an exceptional job in containing a man we know ever so well over here in Chase Young in the college football playoffs. And he really is, again, an underrated guy in the draft, I think, here. He does a great job of keeping the edge rusher in front of him. He does a great job of keeping him to the outside, and he rarely gets beat. When he does get beat, I think if you want to say the one weakness we've seen, he does get beat by the speed rush a little bit, but even then, he does a good job of trying to get that guy around and behind the quarterback where, you know, a good quarterback like Joe Burrow is going to, you know, feel that pressure, going to step up in the pocket and continue to have some time there, not to be too much of a concern there. The Bengals got some flexibility in the offensive line now, and I like the pick with this guy. Then we're going to the third round pick, Joseph Asai out of Texas, the edge rusher. I tell you what. I really like this pick. Asai is a guy that excels in getting into the backfield between the tackles, especially in the run game. It's not his only move, though. He's a guy that's shown time in and time again that he can beat a tackle off the edge. He can get to the QB that way. He's got tremendous football IQ here. We often forget when it comes to the defensive line in the offensive line battle. There's a lot of chess being played there on what moves come and trying to mix things up, kind of trying to keep that offensive line guessing and trying not to, you know, throw them your best hand every single time and save something for later. And this guy, that's something the elites do really well in this league. They're constantly changing it up. And this guy has shown some signs that he's got that ability here as well out of college. So we'll see what we can get here. I like the pick for the Cincinnati Bengals. Going to the fourth round, we have Cameron Sample, the edge out of Tulane. The all-AAC first-team selection has the ability to be a really versatile guy for the Bengals here. He comes in as an edge rusher who has some speed, he has some athleticism, but he's a guy that's coming in here that's actually lined up in a tackle position on multiple occasions, and he's been effective. And it's key for a position like defensive line where you look at it, one of the big things to keep your edge rushers, your pass rushers, you want to keep them guys fresh, being able to substitute those guys in, bring them in and back and forth. This guy's got the ability to be a you know a guy that can fill for multiple positions for that from that aspect, help these guys stay rested, and maybe he can be more than that for these Bengals as well. The number 17 fourth round pick for the Bengals, Tyler Shelvin, the defensive tackle, LSU, another LSU guys. Bengals are trying to build an all LSU team almost over here. <laughs> at this point in the draft, though, Shelvin, I think he's a very low risk high reward pick considering where he's being taken he's just a big interior run stopper something that could really help this Bengals defense and you didn't play in 2020 as we know in college a lot of times when you have that junior year when you play that junior year you see that big jump that big stock raising type of season as far as the draft's concerned and you didn't have that we didn't have the ability to see if that was going to be the case for this guy or not. You know, it could always go the opposite way as well. But I like the gamble for that reason. You think, you know what, this guy progressed a lot. Maybe he's worth more than that fourth round pick. But because he didn't play, Bengals were able to pick him up here and scoop him up late. So I like this pick. With the 34th pick out of the fourth round, the Bengals selected Deontay Smith, the offensive tackle out of East Carolina. Topping things off again with another tackle, this time out of East Carolina. And hey. Keep swinging at him as far as I'm concerned. I'm all for it. you got to throw out there as many tackle offensive line uh, possibilities as possible to try to make this offensive line as good as possible to protect Joe Burrow. Coming into fifth round, they took Evan McPherson, the kicker out of Florida. I like the selection here. He's got a monster leg. He's only missed one extra point in three years in Florida. And it's a position that the Bengals have had issues with in the past. And when you got a guy like Joe Burrow... 
that can bring this team up and down the field and bring them up and down the field in a hurry, he, this guy's a weapon to have. You can you got to think about the two minute drills. That's fifty seconds left. Bro can bring those guys within you know sixty yards of a field goal. This guy can go in there has the ability to go out there and knock one of them in. That's a big addition to this team, and not to mention the consistency at the field goal. We can't forget how the Bengals season started last year. All the old leg cramp. The sixth round pick, Trey Hill out of Georgia. Hill's a big guy. He excels in just pushing guys over in the run game and moving laterally. His big concerns: he ended the season with knee surgeries. And his hand placement is just, it's not the greatest for a blocker. He's versatile, though. So we'll see if he can find a spot on this team. Then at the 18th pick in the sixth round, the Bengals went Chris Evans, the running back out of Michigan. Now, Evans, with good size here, 5'11", fits the bill well what the Bengals are looking for. That being the guy that can go out and try to do the best to possibly replace Giovanni Bernard, but do it on a much more team-friendly contract here. And this is what this guy excels in. Third down, he's a good blocker. He's good at getting out into open space, leaving his quarterback with an outlet pass and trying to make some plays. He can catch in the backfield. It's what the Bengals are looking for in that third down back, and they picked him up late in the draft here. I think it's a good pickup. Finally, the Bengals, seventh round selection, Wyatt Hubert. Hubert, the seventh round edge rusher, and hey, you know, it's the seventh round. We're not going to pretend we know if this guy's going to be a stud or not. At the end of the day, seventh rounders are seventh rounders. We can hope for the best. We really do. You never know what's going to come about these guys. It'd be great if this guy can make an impact on his team, make the roster, make things happen here. We'll see, though. Overall, though, considering I thought this was a team whose hands were completely tied after the Jamar Chase pick, and by that I mean they were in a position where they had to go offensive line second round. They had to go edge defensive line third round. They did a really good job of finding quality and not reaching in those rounds and continue to find more and more talented players throughout this draft. We're going to give this draft a B plus on the grading. That's our thoughts. Love to you guys. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.